So welcome back to the channel, YouTubers. I'm so excited. Remember we started that pineapple wine? I wanted to throw another small batch of wine in there. So I'm gonna make you a plum wine. I'm gonna teach you how to do that one. And then together we'll wrap these up and we'll rack and we'll filter and we'll bottle pineapple and plum wine together. So I don't know if this is part two or if when we do them together, that's part three. I don't know, it doesn't matter, but stay tuned. I'm gonna show you the plum wine recipe and then we'll finish them up in the next video. We'll call that part two and this one part 1A. Make sure you click the like and subscribe button. Let's get right into making this plum wine. It tastes bitter like second hand. All right, so we're gonna make some plum wine as well. We got the pineapple going. I'm gonna show you how, you, how to do the small batch of plum. Uh, it's the same process, same ingredients. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wash all this fruit. This is about three and a half pounds of plums. Just kind of looking for rotten spots, but we'll wash these out and we'll get to the next step. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm going to take the stems off if there's any stems and then I'm just going to cut them open and I'm going to remove the pit. The reason I'm removing the pit, this is not necessary, uh, but if you don't remove the pit, you've got the possibility getting cyanide. That some, if these pits are cracked at all, apparently it can put cyanide in your wine. So we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to cut all these up, remove the pits, slice them in small chunks. We'll So here you can see we got all our fruit uh, chunked up. We've got about an inch uh, pieces there, and that's basically what we want. We'll get the chemicals added to the fermenting bucket. We'll get this in our mesh bag, just like the pineapple wine. We're gonna put the exact same ingredients in to make this plum wine. You were born, your mama said, the Lord bless you and keep you in everything that you do take heart. You were eight, your daddy said, never take your life for granted. Believe in second chances, my love. When the world spins badly on. So you can see we got all our chemicals in the bottom of our bucket. Uh, again, this is a sanitized bucket. Make sure you're sanitizing and watching my video on sanitization. So now it's time to add the fruit. But what we're going to use is our mesh bag. If you watched any of my videos, I love these because it makes it easy to get the pulp out. So we're just going to put this in here and put the bag a little bit over here so we can get the fruit in there. Everything's sanitized from the mesh bag to the container that my plums are in. It's so critical. So we got our plums right in there. We're going to now just seal this up. And like I said, what I like to do is I will use a twist tie to get this as cinched as much as I can. I'll use this a little bit, but um, I still like to use a twist tie because I don't like anything getting out. Twist tie, sanitized. That's it, we got our fruit in there. We're gonna add our sugar water and top this off just like the pineapple wine. So here you can see we got our sugar mixture on the stove and we're just gonna stir this. Again, we're not trying to boil it or anything. We're just trying to get this sugar completely dissolved here. Just starting to get to the point of boiling. So, and you know, it's crystal clear. That's kind of what you want. That means all the sugar's dissolved and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off the heat and let this cool a little bit. So we got our cooled down sugar mixture here and I'm just gonna dump it right in this uh, two gallon bucket. So we're ready to add the water. Again, this is a two gallon bucket. I wanna get this down to about a little over a gallon. 
uh, and you'll see why as you continue to watch these videos. So let's go ahead and uh, add water here. So we got a little bit of water in here. I'm not going to fill it up too much because I want to take a hydrometer reading to make sure the alcohol is not too low. So I'll get this up a little bit. But remember, we put the chemicals in the bottom of this. So I just want to give this a stir to get these chemicals on the bottom mixed in um, before I take a reading. So we got the fruit, we got the sugar, everything's in here that we need. 24 hours from now is when we'll start to put the yeast in. So I took our hydrometer reading, you can see here, and it was at 20% potential alcohol. Uh, that's way high. You want to get it down somewhere between 11 and 13, 12% usually for a wine. So I'm going to add a little bit more water and I will continue to test this until it's down about 12, 13%. So you can see we added uh, pretty much just about where I usually am, about almost to the top of this bucket with maybe an inch or two to spare. Uh, and you can see from the reading, it's a potential alcohol 14%, which is about where I like it. Um, so let's get it capped off. We'll put the airlock in and then we'll be stirring this every day. Uh, 24 hours from now, we'll be adding the yeast. So watch for that. All right, so it's been 24 hours. We've let this bucket sit, and we're gonna now add the yeast. So we're gonna open the bucket up. And I got my sanitized paddle here. We're just gonna give this just a little bit of a stir before we go ahead and add the yeast. And what you're going to find when I add this yeast, I am just going to, I'm not going to put it in warm water or anything. I find out it works best if you just sprinkle it and let it sit on top here. And then we'll be stirring this each day, probably for about seven to ten days. You can see I'm just trying to make sure it's uh, just touching the liquid. All right, and we'll seal her back up. So here it's been 24 hours since we added the yeast. Uh, we're going to give it a stir. And you can actually smell the yeast now. So I know it's working. You also want to make sure you keep pushing your bag down and you don't want the fruit to dry out. Um, so that's why I'm just kind of pushing it down. All right, so primary fermentation is complete. I know because I did a hydrometer reading and it got down to 1.0 specific gravity. Uh, if you're not sure how to use a hydrometer, I have a video out there. Make sure you check that out. But we're ready to rack this into our carboy uh, and remove all this fruit. So we got all our equipment sanitized. We're just ready to rack this down below here where the carboy is. Remember, everything is sanitized. So again a crucial make sure again watch that sanitation video if you're not sure so we're going to get this siphon going and you'll be able to see it's going right down into the carboy now what we want, don't want to do is we don't want to squeeze any of the pulp out of this bag so we're going to pay attention to that and as this gets low i'll slowly start to lift it up so you can see the wine is coming down into this carboy it's almost like a pinkish color uh, again, this is the plum wine, so it is a really unique color, and I can't wait to try this one. So you can see the wine is coming up here, and we want to get it about up to right around this neck area where it starts to uh, thin out. And we should have enough to put like in a quart size mason jar uh, that will be used for topping once all this settles out and we start racking this over time. So here you can see the plum wine. We got a one gallon and a quart size container out of this batch of plum wine. So we're gonna let it settle. We'll rack it in about 30 to 40 days. But I don't know if you'd see the color of this. It is a beautiful pinkish color wine. It's, it's gonna be amazing. Remember.
remember that you belong You are strong, you are brave You are all you meant to be Everything you ever dreamed 